I'm going to talk about the only NURBS object that does not work with splines, and that's the HyperNURBS object or the HyperNURBS generator. It works with 3D objects. The HyperNURBS object is right there. It's the first thing in this group of six. I'll click on that to add it. Obviously, nothing will happen until we put something inside it. Now, what HyperNURBS does is that it takes objects that have sharp edges or sharp points and smooths them off, rounds them off. And then it allows you to edit those things. It allows you to stretch them, move them around, and contort them and create something that might look like a real-world object or just something that's in your mind's eye. And the typical building block that you use when you work with HyperNURBS, believe it or not, is a cube. So let me click on the cube there and add that to the scene. Let's just take a look at the cube first before I put it inside HyperNURBS, make it a child of HyperNURBS. The cube has a number of segments. One segment per side is what that means. If I were to make this editable, for example, I'll go over here and click on that. I could now move these segments around. If I were to take the polygon tool here, for example, I have the move tool here, click on that polygon. I could move it around like so, like this. What I want to do is have more options here, more segments here on the side. So I'm going to undo that, Control or Command Z a few times. I'm going to change the number of segments here. So I'm going to go back to a regular parametric cube here and change the number of segments. So I'll just bump this up to three, for example, on the X side. And there are three of them along the X axis. Let's make three for Y too. So up and down there are three. And make three for Z as well. So now we've created this kind of simple Rubik's Cube there. And now if I make that editable, for example, we can now work with one of these polygons at a time. It's a little better. It gives us more options there. But these are kind of sharp edged. It'd be nice if they could be a little rounder and have these edges here be rounder as well. I want to undo this a couple times. What I want to do now is make this cube a child of the hypernerves and watch what happens when I do that. I'm going to drag the cube down there, make it a child, and boom, it turns into this kind of sphere. So what's going on here? Well, this line right there, for example, and this one right there are the original straight lines that created the cube along with this one here. Let's just take a look at the top side and front view by clicking on this guy up here or pressing the middle mouse button. Look at that, they look all the same. This is the top view and you see the four original edges here, but now they're rounded off along the midpoint there. Look at the front view, you see the four edges that you would have seen if you looked at it from the front like that. And the right view, here are four more edges, but they've all been curved. That's what gives you this sphere. I'm going to go back to this guy now, click on this corner here. These little lines here are called subdivisions. The hypernerves put these subdivisions in. If I went to the display and changed it from lines here to no lines, you wouldn't see the subdivisions. The subdivisions are there to make things look better when you edit it, but in fact they don't give you more polygons to work with when you want to edit this thing. So let me just put them back on so you can see them anyways. So let's see what happens if I make this cube editable now that it's inside the hypernerves. Click on that, make it active, make it editable. And now you see the segments, one segment per side of the original sides here. So if I click on one like this, I can pull it out. So it is a little bit nicer, but still not many opportunities. So if you're going to work with something like a cube and hypernerves, you want to have more segments before you convert it. So I'm going to back up a bit here, Control or Command Z a whole bunch of times here to the cube back to its original state there. I'm going to increase the number of segments now to about five. So we'll change to five segments across the x-axis here. Watch what happens when I do that. There you go. Now we're beginning to see some possibilities here. Let's make them all five so we can really have a lot of things to work with here like that. Now you see all those little subdivisions there. That's because when you go to hypernerves, here are the subdivisions. And it says two for the editor and three for the renderer. What that means is when you look at the editor version here and you see two here, that means that there are four subdivisions linearly across each of these segments. 2 means 2 squared. If I change this to 3, it'll be 2 to the third power, 8. So 8 little boxes across the line here, or 64 per segment. I'm going to go back to 2 here like that. And I'll show you what I mean when I make this editable. Click on this. Make it editable by clicking on this button there. Now you see each of those segments there is 4 by 4. That's because the hypernerves were subdivided into 2, or 2 squared. That's just what that means. It doesn't mean 2 by 2. It means 2 squared, or 4 across. So I click on the cube again there like that. And now I want to edit this guy on a per segment basis here. And I'm going to talk about working with polygons and points and edges later in the course, but I'll just give you a brief look here. I've got the polygon tool selected here. I click on one of these polygons and I can pull it out now. And look at how nice that is. It's much smoother now. We have rounded edges here. Just think of the possibilities here as you move this around in terms of what you could build just by starting to pull these polygons out. Click on the edge tool here. I can grab an edge. Pull that out as well, or push it in, something like that. So you can build objects using this thing. You can model objects, as it's called. Now again, the modeling tools here are relatively rudimentary, but they do give you a lot of possibilities. Click on this point tool here, the same thing. Grab one of these points, click on it, 
pull it up, pull it down. You can also rotate these guys. You can scale these guys, things like that. You can grab multiple points as well. So I can click on, let's say, this one here, and then shift click on another one. I notice when I try to shift click on this one, I might not get it because that arrow's in the way. You can turn off this little axis display here by pressing Alt or Option D as in dog. It turns it off. Choose another one here by shift clicking on it, and I have two of them selected, like so. Now if I turn that axis back on, Alt or Option D, here we go, now I can pull that guy out like so, two at a time. So just consider the possibilities here when you use hypernerves on an object like this. You don't have to use a cube. I'm going to delete this, go back to the parametric objects here. And instead of the cube, let's click on the pyramid. Pyramid's pretty sharp edged, right? Let's make that a child of the hypernerves like this. There you go, and look what happens there. Let's increase the segments here. And now it's going to begin to look like a pyramid again. Let's go make that editable. Click on you, make you editable. Now you can see that you've got all these various polygons here, or these various points. You can edit this as well, similarly to what we just did a moment ago. Let's delete that. Do one more thing here. Go up here, get the platonic. It works very much the same as the pyramid. Increase the number of segments here per polygon. I make that a child of hypernerves. Make it editable. And again, we can work with these polygons here. It'll be much smoother as we move these guys around like that. Now, one more thing I want to show you. I'm going to click on Platonic and delete it. I want to show you what happens if you use something that's already curved. Take this guy here and grab a torus. I'm going to make that a child of hypernerves and watch what happens. Nothing. You've got a curved shape already, so making it a child of hypernerves really doesn't do you any good. You really want to work with things that are not curved like this to begin with when you work with hypernerves. So there you go. That's hypernerves, a rudimentary but still powerful modeling tool.